three, two, one. Let's go. Normalize your diagonals. Make sure the ship's diagonal movement isn't faster than movement in cardinal directions. Most games follow this rule, with a few exceptions, like Battle Garega. Resist the temptation to add acceleration and deceleration. In the early stages of your game, the ship's movement will feel pretty bad. You might be tempted to add inertia to make it feel smoother, but avoid this at all costs. Inertia effectively just adds input lag to the player's movement and makes precise, reactive dodging less reliable. It's also an unnecessary crutch. There are other ways of making movement feel smoother without sacrificing the player's controls. Add a turning animation. This is obvious but important. Make sure your turn animation's speed matches the speed of the ship itself. Quick movement calls for quick turning speeds. Thrusters for up and down movement will make your game feel extra smooth. Use follow through animations. Because messing with the player's controls is a big no-no, you want to focus on follow through animations to make things appear smoother. Take a look at Alucard's movement in Symphony of the Night. Even though Alucard, the game object, moves instantly, different appendages like his hair and cape lag behind him. This, together with the really smooth turning and running animations, make the movement feel seamless. To apply this to your typical shmup, you have to look not only at the ship sprite, but everything next to it as well. The options are appendages. Making them lag behind the ship will make movement feel smoother. Giving the ship and its options long trails will let players truly feel the motion. Finally, dense and quick player shots also help smoothen out the ship movement, because players use them to estimate their ship's position. Gradually transition between movement speeds. Cave games with standard and focus shot speeds have gradual transitions between them. The speed of the transition will dictate your game's controls. Longer transitions will feel smoother, but give the players less control. Toho games are a good counterexample. They switch speeds instantly, so their controls feel twitchy and reactive. Three, two, one. Let's go! Make it fast. Faster bullets feel more dangerous and powerful, and give near instant feedback to the player. Nothing feels worse than being able to catch up to your own bullets. Make it tall. Fast bullets should be tall. Stretching out objects simulates motion blur and makes them feel faster. You can go crazy with this. The sky is the limit. Make it thick. Thick detailed bullets and juicy splash animations are more noticeable, especially if they have good value contrast. Though always check how they look like in-game. High speed will make most small details very hard to notice. Make it messy. This isn't mandatory, but messy patterns can be a lot of fun. Because of how fast the bullets move, the players will only see them as a full stream rather than individual projectiles, so the whole is often greater than the sum of its parts. Add an on-screen shot limit. Limit the number of player projectiles on screen. Let players shoot more only if their projectiles leave the screen, hit another object, or are otherwise destroyed. This mechanic was pioneered by games like Space Invaders and Galaga. It was a clever way to use hardware limitations to their advantage. When the hardware improved, the shot limit stuck around because of its gameplay benefits, and even showed up in other games like Contra and Mega Man. With a shot limit in place, the player's damage will be based on their distance to the enemies. The closer the player gets, the faster their shot rate will be, and the more damage they will do. It adds risk versus reward dynamics and allows for techniques like point blanking. A wide shot is another way to encourage aggression. So is an aura that does damage on contact, like the one seen in Dodonpachi. Deceive the player. If your game has power-ups, directly increasing the player's shot power can lead to a lot of problems. The solution to this is simple. Lying. For example, make their shots seem twice as powerful, but only boost their damage slightly. To make the player feel like they're powering up, you can make the projectiles thicker, taller, more saturated, or even increase their number. This way, you can make power-ups feel satisfying without making balancing too complicated. Three, two, one. Let's go! Separate visuals and hitboxes. Bullet hell games are known for having small hitboxes, much smaller than their sprites. While this might seem weird, it's something all games do to some extent. When people play games, they roughly estimate the positions of in-game objects, usually by using quick glances or peripheral vision. This is imprecise and can lead to lots of small errors. To compensate for this, the hitboxes in most games are smaller than their sprites would suggest. 
It makes players feel more confident about their judgments. This is comparable to input buffers in action games, grace frame jumps in platformers and other kinds of small assists. The bullet hells are just a bit more extreme. A good rule of thumb for hitboxes is, if it helps the player, make it big. If it harms the player, then make it small. For example, things like power-ups and player shots should have big hitboxes, while stage hazards and enemy bullet hitboxes should be small. Separate hurtboxes and hitboxes. Balancing hitbox sizes for different types of collisions can be pretty difficult, so you want to separate hitboxes and hurtboxes. Enemy collision hitboxes should be fairly small, so the player doesn't get clipped, while their hurtboxes should be large, so the player doesn't have to aim too precisely. Consider the drawbacks of small hitboxes. Even though small hitboxes come with a ton of benefits, they have some negatives as well. By shrinking your hitboxes, you are making your gameplay area larger. As a result, you will need to rely on increasing bullet counts or sizes to keep things challenging. This can end up cluttering the screen and make it hard to read. Small hitboxes also allow for a lot of lucky, accidental dodging, which makes it hard to create very restrictive challenges. And even though people expect small hitboxes and shmups, their tiny sizes can still be unintuitive to new players. Find a balance which works for your game.